In this video, we're going to walk through two practice problems with RISC-V using the stack and a stack pointer. The first program will be a very simple program where we're just summing two numbers, storing the result on the stack, and then storing it in a register. The second program will be a more advanced recursive function. Actually, we'll be doing factorial, but we'll be using the stack and the stack pointer to help. As you can see, I've already drawn out the stack for us, and we can just assume some arbitrary address. Just keep in mind that the stack pointer is, in most architectures, at the highest address. So we just imagine this at the top of memory. And then off to the far right, I just have a couple of the registers that we'll use throughout the program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set A0 to the value 10. We're actually adding 0 and 10 but it's the same thing. The next instruction asks us to store in A1 the value of 0 plus 20, so 20. And now we're going to jump and link to the sum function. Now it's important to know that this jump and link instruction underneath the hood, it is setting the return address to the address that it's being called from. It's linking. So we'll just pretend that this is address 3 and we'll set the return address to 3. And now we're going to jump to sum. So the first instruction asks us to decrement the stack pointer by 12 bytes. And before we continue, I want to point out that for these examples, I am setting it up such that the stack pointer points to the next free location in memory to write. So right now, stack pointer is pointing at the cell that it is available to write to. So we'll go ahead and decrement by 12. So this would be 4 bytes, 8 bytes, and 12 bytes. And if you're wondering why we're using the numbers 12, 4, 8, multiples of 4, this is because in memory, each one of our cells holds 32 bits. And 32 bits is comprised of how many bytes? Well, if one byte is 8 bits, that means that each cell contains 4 bytes. So if we want to jump from cell to cell, we have to offset by 4 bytes each time. Now this is because we're using RISC-V 32-bit ISA. Now if you were using a 64-bit, you would use an offset of 8 bytes. So the instruction after we decremented our stack pointer is to store the value of A0 into stack pointer with an offset of 8. So that would be plus 4 plus 8. So here we're going to store A0 which is 10. And the next instruction asks us to do the same thing for register A1. So we'll store here but it was an offset of 4 so stack pointer 0, 4. And now we're going to set A0 equal to A0 plus A1. So that's going to be 10 plus 20. So now A0 is equal to 30. Get rid of this. So now we want to store the result at stack pointer with an offset of 12, so up at the top. So we're going to store 30 up here. Now what we're doing is kind of weird. We wouldn't really do this generally. This is just to get good practice with how we use the stack and how we can use the stack. Let's just pretend that maybe we needed to use A0 and A1 for this program, but when this program finishes, we need A0 and A1 to be 10 and 20. But since we've used A0 and 30, we need a way to get A0 back to the previous value. And that's where the stack comes in. It helps us remember. So continuing with the program, after we've put the result on the top of the stack, now load the values back into A0 and A1. So A0 is going to be the stack pointer with an offset of 8. So 4, 8. So 
So now we set A0 back to 10. And we're going to set A1 back to the value that's stack pointer with an offset of 4, which is just 0, 4, 20, which it already is. So nothing to change. And now we're going to add to stack pointer plus 12. So we're going to do 4, 8, 12. And now we're going to jump and return to the return address. And remember that the jump and link instruction helped us, and it set the RA the return address register to the address we were at. So we come back to this instruction and we continue the program flow. So the next instruction asks us to load into register S1 stack pointer with an offset of 0. So we're setting S1 equal to 30. We don't do anything so it's kind of a weird program. We just jump to the end and then program continues through and nothing happens. But I hope you were able to see that if we did need to save the value of the registers, we can just push them onto the stack, and then when we need them, we can just load them from the stack. This is a very powerful tool and concept in computer science. Now we'll step into the more advanced recursive function, factorial. For this program, we'll follow the same flow and work through how this program interacts with the stack and keep track of some values as we work through. And again, remember that stack pointer always points at the next free cell that we can write to. So the first instruction asks us to set a0 equal to 3. So we'll do that. Now we're going to jump and link to factorial. Remember, jump and link is going to set the return address register for us. So we'll just pretend that this is instruction 2. And now we'll jump to the factorial function. And the first instruction is going to be the setup for our base case. And we want to know if n is less than or equal to 1. If it is, we're going to jump to this label, which is all the way down here. So the first thing we're going to do is in register t0, we're going to load the value 1. And then we're going to perform a test and say, is a0 less than or equal to t0? Is it? Well, t0 is 1 and a0 is 3 so that's not true so we will not jump here instead we'll just continue with the program flow so the first thing we're gonna do is decrement stack pointer by 8 so this is gonna be 4 and 8 so stack pointer comes down there and here we're gonna store the value of a0 into stack pointer with an offset of 4. So we're going to set a0 equal to 3. And then the next instruction is we want to store the return address into stack pointer plus 8, 8 bytes. So this would be 4 and 8. So this would be 2. Just a reminder, this value 2 just points to this address of this function. So the next step is we're going to make our recursive call. And to set that up, we're going to subtract 1 from a0. So this becomes 2. And then we're going to jump and link to factorial. Remember, this sets the RA register, the return address register. And let's just pretend that this is address 70. So we'll set this to 70. And then we'll come back up here and begin the process again. So we'll set t0 to 1 we're going to perform that test. Is a0 less than or equal to 1? No, it's 2. So we're going to decrement stack pointer by 4, 8. So stack pointer comes right here. And then we're going to load our new a0 into stack pointer with an offset of 4 and our return address in the stack pointer with an offset of 8 bytes. a0 in 4 bytes, so here, and ra address 70 and 8 bytes above. And now we'll continue to our next recursive call and we're going to add negative 1 to 2 which is just subtracting 1. So a0 is equal to 1 and we're going to jump and link. So we set ra equal to 70 because it's the same line. So we come back up here to this factorial and start again. However now when we perform this test a0 is less than or equal to 1. 
So we are going to jump to this factorial return 1 label down here. And here what we do is we just set a0 to 1, which it already is. And now we're going to jump and return to the return address, which is 70. So we'll jump back up here. And we're going to move a0 into t1. So it's 1. Next, we're going to load into register a0 the value at stack pointer with an offset of 4. So a0 becomes 2. Let's just go ahead and clean this up. a0 becomes 2. And we're going to load our return address from the, with an offset of 8, so 8 bytes, so 70, which it already is. And now we're going to increment stack pointer 8 bytes, so it comes up here. And remember, this stuff in here is just junk. We don't have to worry about it, because in the future, if we need to, we can just write over it. And now we're going to multiply and store the result of a0 times t1. So 2 times 1 is 2, so we don't have to change anything. And then we're going to jump and return to the return address, which is line 70. So we come back up here, and we're going to move a0 into t1. So now t1 becomes 2. And we're going to load, again, the stack pointer with an offset of 4 bytes into register a0. So 4 bytes is right here. So a0 becomes 3, and we're also going to load the return address from stack pointer with an offset of 8, which is right here. So now the return address is 2, which is up here. And now we're going to increment stack pointer 8 bytes. And now we're going to multiply a0 by t1 and store it into a0. So 3 times 2, 6. And now we're going to jump and return to the return address. But remember, our return address is 2 now. So instead of continuing in this recursive function, we're actually going to go from here all the way up to where we originally called the factorial function. And from there, we just continue with the program. Now, I don't want to cover e calls in detail, but you might see them. So I thought it would be a good idea to include them. If you're unfamiliar with eCalls, it stands for environment calls. And what's happening is this instruction is passing control to the operating system. And now when the operating system gets control, it's going to look at register A7 for a value. And this value determines which routine the operating system will run. Setting A7 to 10 is the exit system call. And this makes sense because if we didn't exit right here, we would fall through and end up back in our factorial function. And here, this is kind of just redundant, but what we're doing is we're setting a1 equal to 6. Generally, for other function calls associated with the e-call, so other operating system routines will pass an argument with that e-call, and we do this by passing it into a1. That's going to be all for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment down below and consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, thank you.